Well, the federal government's net zero strategy is ad hoc and uncoordinated. That's according to a new Grattan Institute report. The Institute is recommending a major restructuring of Australia's power grid. It says a prioritisation of energy stability is needed but when coal is being phased out. The report also recommends market structure design that can ensure supply in a high renewable electricity system. The opposition has seized on it, saying it's further evidence of a fully renewable energy grid not being feasible. When the Grattan Institute, a left-leaning think tank, is criticising the Albanese government for this reckless race to 82% renewables and then to an all-renewables approach and the impacts it's having on the reliability and the affordability, you've got to step up and say you've got it wrong. So that was a response from the opposition. Joining me live now, Tony Wood, Director of the Energy Program at the Grattan Institute, which authored this report. Thanks for your time. What's interesting about this, I think, is you paint the picture that right now things seem OK. Prices have certainly stabilised. Lights aren't going out anywhere. But what's looming is a bit different. And, and the energy system takes a long time to do anything. So we, we feel like everything's fine. How soon could we have major issues and why? Well, within the next five years, things get increasingly difficult, particularly as we get to the next stage of the closure of coal-fired power stations, at least the scheduled closure of coal-fired power stations, because as they are closing, we haven't been replacing them with things that, in combination, do more or less the same thing. So wind and solar by themselves are incredibly useful and will be at the forefront of the transition. But because they are intermittent, they need to be backed up with other things. And it's the other things in the backing up that hasn't been taking place in the way it should. At the same time, we haven't been building the transmission grid. It's necessary to connect all those renewables. And in the middle of all that, mm. partly because the state governments became frustrated with the Commonwealth government, they've been doing their own thing. That's why you have, you've seen us in our report talking about uncoordinated and had ad hoc interventions by a variety of governments. Yeah, so the national energy market maybe not living up to its name. Is one of the big things happening here, because, look, phasing out coal is going to happen regardless, and indeed the coalition's well and truly fronted up to that, but the renewable replacements, the large-scale stuff, is proving a lot more difficult than small-scale. You know, small-scale was always sort of overshooting expectations of anything. Mainly we're talking about rooftop solar. Large-scale projects and everything to do with it, whether it be backup, whether it be the transition lines... Um, that part is proving harder and slower? Yeah, like it was, to be honest, in hindsight, it's easier to say, we underest it was under underestimated how difficult and how challenging this was going to be for three or four reasons. Firstly, in the first phase of the renewable transition, we could just connect wind farms and solar farms where there was already capacity on the existing transmission grid. And we put it on rooftops, as you said, Tom. Now we're getting to the stage where that transmission capacity has been exhausted and we have to build new transmission. That means we have to put it in places where people don't like the look of it. It's not the most attractive thing you've ever seen. We haven't done a very good job of engaging with local communities. Um, and the regulatory mm. processes of getting approval for wind and solar farms is very slow, much slower than it should have been. At the same time, it's all getting more expensive. So that is the main reason why this is proving to be a difficult and slower transition than what had been anticipated. Yeah, and because it's slower, it being slower, it is the replacement to coal and coal still due to exit the grid. So there you run into the problem. Now, one of your solutions, a carbon price. What's your 30-second spiel to a Labor minister who has their <laughs> eyebrows raised when you make that suggestion? Well, we have carbon prices already. Um, the, the safeguard mechanism that the, gov the current government's using, they copied or used a policy put in place by the coalition government, is a carbon price for heavy industry. The renewable energy target, which has been behind the progress we have made in electricity on reducing emissions, is a formal carbon price. Not the best one, not the first best, probably a bit more expensive than it should have been. Didn't deal with gas the right way, but we've got lots of carbon prices. What we need as we go through the next stage of this is to have a much clearer and longer term view of a carbon price. I don't, it doesn't have to be an economy wide carbon tax or carbon price, but we do need some clear direction for people who are going to make investment, not just in the renewable energy, but in the things that have to back mm. it up, like storage and like gas, which are going to be necessary.